The All Progressive Congress National Reconciliation Committee has received no fewer than 170 petitions from aggrieved party members across the country. The committee's secretary, John Eno, who disclosed this in an interview with correspondents on Monday, said the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent ban on interstate movements made the panel to suspend its sittings across the country. The senator said this as these as the president Buhari and the APC governors on Monday intensified efforts to prevent the party from disintegrating. But as the president and the governors were meeting at the presidential villa, sites to the APC crisis at the national level were taking actions that showed that the problem was far from being over. The panel a few months ago said it had gotten 150 petitions. Joining us live now to speak on Ize Yamu's emergence and the legal hodders is Odiana Eriata, who is a legal practitioner and also an APC member. Good to have you, Barista Eriata. Good morning. Good morning to you. Now, straight into the matter, whether formality or contest, Osage Izeyamu emerged as APC candidate. But are you not worried that Gyodom, purported, uh, the purported acting national chairman, has written INEC not to recognize the exercise? I, I, I'm not worried at all. Uh, by the grace of God, I was involved in the process. Um, yesterday, I was in the door. I was in my ward where the primaries took place because it took place in all the uh, 192 wards in the door, and the uh, results were transmitted to the local government headquarters. It was witnessed by INEC, all the EOs in all the local government witnessed it before the result was transmitted to the state headquarters for announcement. Before the primary elections, um, approvals were sought and, uh, and uh, granted by the Independent National Electoral Commission, having complied with the entire process. The, 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 all the security agents were on ground from the Commissioner of Police for the list. Of course, the Nigerian police force were also deployed from the neighboring states to monitor the exercise. You know, so. I don't know why uh, the chief did not get addressed. He wasted his time to continue in his uh, distractions. Everything, every process was complied with. Even the, uh, the tax force on the COVID-19, uh, the monitoring uh, team, every process was complied with. I, I think we are good to go. Mm -hmm. And I congratulate the Pastor Sergei Zayab for emerging victorious to the process. Just on the heels of what you've just said, you mentioned that INEC uh, was there. Now, can you confirm to us that INEC sent in observers to monitor that election? Because at the early part of the exercise, they were yet to be spotted. Exactly what I'm saying, that INEC sent observers to monitor the entire process. On all the coalition centers in the local government, INEC representatives were there in all the wards. We have INEX representatives and we have the Nigerian Police Force representatives and other uh, security agents. Mm -hmm. So at uh, that, they can confirm that INEC witnessed that. So when I saw some headlines that uh, Chief Dr. Adan has written to INEC not to approve of the exercise, I, I feel it was just a, a, a huge joke. But INEC was involved in the process. Hmm. Now, what is the fate of your candidate? Because, you know, Philas suggests Obaseki might be getting sympathy votes, including Edo North, where Adam Soshomole comes from, with some people accusing him, you know, um, accusing Oshomole there of being overbearing. I, I, think, I think those are just social media commentators who are not on track. We are politicians in Edo, who are people um, who do politics in Edo, I will know what is going on. Any day, any time, Oshiomole is still pride of Edo politics. Nobody can take that away from him. And if you look at the analysis from Edo State, the man we are talking about here, Pastor Saige Zeyam, was a front runner. He was a candidate of People's Democratic Party in 2016. He actually trounced the present governor, except for the which they confirmed except for what happened at the end of the day. He's a formidable candidate in all the 192 worlds. Now, if you have somebody like Osai Gizayamu, now the flag bearer of all progressive Congress, 
and uh, perhaps other socialist legacy in Edo State, whether we like it or not, is still very much, uh, you know, it's still very much, uh, very visible. It's still very much, it speaks for itself. And all that will come to play during the proper campaign and during the elections. I can tell you today, Apostle Sai Gezayama will trans whosoever becomes the candidate of all Progressive Congress, mm -hmm. all, uh, all uh, People's Democratic uh, uh, Party. Do not forget, as we speak, that there's already an interim order which was granted by the High Court in River State in favor of uh, uh, Right Honorable Bede Ihama, who's representing Oredo constituency in the uh, National Assembly in the House of Rights. He is the leading candidate in PDP, and he was set, according to permutations, to win the primary. Now, um, Governor Basaki has decamped to People's Democratic Party, and all kinds of waiver and all that is being granted, which is not in, in accordance with the law. And the man who is most respected member of the House of Rep has gone to a high court to seek another. They have an interim order now against Governor Basaki for being screened and for being granted all the waiver he, he has applied for and for participating in the primaries. And there's also one of the reliefs that there ought not to be an extension on the window for the purchase of farms. So he has his own baggages as well. So I think he's not yet in Huru for uh, Obaseki emerging the candidate of uh, People's Democratic Party. So as we speak, the only candidate that any party has been able to produce right now is Pastor Sage Zayam, and that is all progressive uh, Congress. So for PDP, we are still waiting because uh, they are now engrossed with all kinds of uh, litigations. Hmm. You, you seem to be suggesting there that that uh, process was seamless. Should we be expecting the same, you know, even post-COVID-19, that we can have an electoral process that can move that seamlessly, in your opinion, based on what you observed as someone who was on ground yesterday? Definitely, definitely. Because what happened yesterday was quite unique. I can tell you that those in the uh, villages, are also very conscious of this process. We have so many uh, face masks, we have sanitizers, and they also observe the social distancing. And it's not going to be more uh, prominent. I mean, the observance of social distancing and all that during the elections. Because INEC is putting a lot of mechanisms in place to ensure that there's a redesign of um, a, 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 Point of uh, voting points and not to, to also ensure that the movement of voters from one point to the other, the ingredients I will use that word, the observance of the COVID 19 uh, regulations will be observed. I, I don't think there will be much of a problem because everybody is conscious, everybody wants to be alive, whether we do elections or not. People are very much conscious of that and we're going to have a seamless uh, process. All over the world, elections are going on. Yes, timetables are altered, but elections are not being uh, totally shifted because of COVID-19. Mm. People are adopt adapting to the process, and the uh, state is not going to be different. Right. Thank you so very much, legal practitioner Odiana Erata, for your contributions this morning. Thank you very much. I All appreciate right. it.